In this video, we're going to be talking about the definition of convergence of a series, as well as a couple of examples applying this definition. So first, we're going to recall the definition of convergence of a sequence. We'll see how this is related to the definition of convergence of a series in a minute. So we know that a sequence converges if our limit as n goes to infinity of a n is equal to L for some finite number and diverges otherwise. Okay, so determining convergence of our sequence is all about looking at the limit of that nth term as n goes to infinity. Okay, so what about convergence of a series? So given a series, the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of a sub i, which we know means um, a1 plus a2 plus a3, etc., we say the following. We say that the series converges, okay, if its sequence of partial sums, okay, where the notation for those partial sums I use is Sn, so Sn equals the sum of the first n terms, okay, so Sn equals the sum from i equals 1 to infinity, whoops, excuse me, i equals 1 to n of a sub i, meaning a1 plus a2 plus dot 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 plus a n, okay, so our series converges if its sequence of partial sums, given by this definition, converges. Okay, so what is that saying? Meaning, because this series convergence here is defined in terms of this particular sequence converging, that relates to our sequence definition, meaning that the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n equals some finite number s. Okay, and that finite number s is called the sum of the series. So in our introductory video, um, we talked about the idea of convergence or divergence of a series having to do with looking at partial sums, um, the sum of the, the first term, and then what happens when I add one more term to that, what happens when I add one more to term to that. So that list actually creates a particular sequence of partial sums, and if I can find a formula for the nth partial sum or the nth cumulative sum and take the limit as n goes to infinity of that, if that comes out to a finite number, then I'm going to be able to say that my series converges, okay? And the series diverges otherwise. Okay, so if the sequence of partial sums diverges, in other words. So we're going to look at just a couple of examples of how we can apply this definition to get an idea um, of how this works in practice. Okay. So let's use the definition of convergence, divergence of a series to determine if the following series converges or diverges. And if it converges, we're going to try to figure out what the sum of that series is. Okay, so our first example is one of these ones that we were introduced to earlier. i equals 1 to infinity of i, which means 1 plus 2 plus 3, etc. here. Okay, so before we... Um, Go ahead and apply our definition. I just want us to think about the um, couple of different objects that are involved here that we're going to be looking at. So anytime we have an infinite series, there's three different sorts of objects that we're looking at. So the first one being 
the sequence of terms that we're actually adding together. Okay, so here are our individual terms are 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay, I have the infinite series itself, okay, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, all the way off to infinity. And then I have what my definition of convergence of my infinite series is based on, which is the sequence of partial sums. So we just want to distinguish these three different objects, make sure we're talking about the appropriate thing. So our, what's our sequence of partial sums for this um, example? Well, the first partial sum is 1. The second partial sum is 1 plus 2, or 3. The third partial sum is 1 plus 2 plus 3, or 6. The fourth partial sum is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, or 10. Okay, so our sequence of partial sums is this list, 1, 3, 6, 10, etc. Okay, and we want to be thinking about the convergence or divergence of this sequence. We want to think about what is a formula for Sn. Okay. So the big idea here, so how to use the definition. Well, I need to figure out a formula for Sn. Okay, so this particular sequence of numbers that we have here are actually what's called the triangular numbers. So I have 1 and 3 and then I have 6. Okay, from adding 3 to that, and then we can add another row here of 4, it gives me 10. Okay, so a way to figure out the, the formula for these triangular numbers is if I add a triangle of the same number of dots to this, so let's say I add, um, let's see, right over here, add three dots just on this example here. Okay, see how this side is length three and this side is length two, but the blue dots that I want there are half of that. Okay, well this is three times two divided by two. The one for six would end up being um, over two from doubling that and then dividing by two. So what we see is that the formula we're going to get for the um, nth number in the sequence is going to be n times n plus one over two. So this equals six, clearly equals three. I can draw this here one more time. Okay, so you see how that's four by three divided by two, etc. Okay, so this particular formula gives us what our Sn is. What else do I have to do? Well, after I've found Sn, the definition involves looking at what the limit as n goes to infinity is of Sn. Okay, well in this example, I'd be taking the limit as n goes to infinity of n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay, so that's going to come out to be infinity. So it's something really big, just divided by 2. Okay, so what does this tell us about our conclusion? Well, we can say that since our sequence of partial sums here, Sn, okay, diverges because we found that limit is infinity. then by definition, the series that we were interested in, the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of i, also diverges. Okay, so we had um, sort of looked at the, the partial sums for this example in our introduction and we sort of had this idea that I was as I was adding additional terms it was going to keep get, getting bigger and bigger so it should diverge but now we've made this more um, formal by, by applying the definition and actually being able to take a limit of something um, to show that the series diverges. So actually finding Sn um, can be tricky in several situations. So we're going to look at using this, this definition and finding Sn in, a, in uh, a couple of cases. 
but in general, um, finding SN is very hard, so we'll need some additional ways of determining um, series convergence, and that's why we'll go through chapter 11 and learn lots of other um, techniques for determining series convergence where we won't have to go back and figure out a formula for SN. But let's just look at one more where we, we go through and apply this definition. So here I have the example um, of the series from i equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the i. Remember this is 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, etc. Okay. This second one here is actually a special type of series called a geometric series. Okay, so once we introduce something called the geometric series test, that would be really what we would, we would apply to a situation like this. But just to get um, one more idea of how this definition works, Let's again our, remind ourselves that there's three different objects that we could be talking about when referring to an infinite series. We have our sequence of terms, which in this case looks like one half, comma one fourth, comma one eighth, etc. I have my um, infinite series, which is the infinite sum of doing one. Um, half plus one fourth plus one eighth, etc. And then I have the sequence of partial sums. Okay, so what do our partial sums look like here? Well, S1 is just a half. S2 is one half plus one fourth, which is three fourths. S3 is one half plus one fourth plus one eighth which is 7 eighths. So we try to identify a pattern here. Okay, and it looks like for Sn, we're getting that the denominator here, okay, is coming from powers of 2. So it looks like for n equals 1, we have 2 to the first. For n equals 2, we have 2 squared. For n equals 3, we have 2 cubed. So it looks like I have 2 to the n in the denominator. And then it looks like the numerator ends up being 1 less than the denominator. So we have 2 to the n minus 1. Okay. So when we go through and use the definition, we know that the first part was to find Sn. Okay. So here we can see that Sn is equal to this 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n. The next step involved taking the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn. So the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn here is our limit as n goes to infinity of 2, whoops, 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n. Okay, so to take that limit, we just want to simplify that a little bit. If I can divide each of my terms by 2 to the n, so I have 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n. So notice that as n goes to infinity, this 1 over 2 to the n is going to 0. So this is going to be equal to 1. Okay, so now this gives a more formal um, proof or, or argument for why this, this sum that we discuss um, in terms of Zeno's paradox, and we, we drew some, some pictures to sort of justify why that sum would be 1. Now we can see that with our, our limit notation and things in terms of the definition, that that series does um, converge to 1. So we can conclude that since our sequence of partial sums here, Sn, converges to 1. Okay, this means that the series, in this case our series is the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the i, also converges by definition. Okay, so this gives us an idea of how this definition works in a couple of simple examples.